This is the holy grail of dyno sheets. He makes 540 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPMs and still just about 500 horsepower at redline. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Bank for Buck Racing and we're here today to talk about my favorite topic, boost response. Now, what is boost response? It is how fast your turbo spools. So, something a lot of car enthusiasts mix up is spooling. So, when your turbo is starting to spool versus when your turbo is fully spooled. Have you ever been talking to another car enthusiast and like, oh yeah, my turbo spools at 2000 RPM. It sounds like they're implying that it's fully spooled, but in reality, it's just starting to spool up and it's not really making any real power. Fully spooled is when your torque starts to flatten out and peak, just like this. Just like on this dyno sheet, his is peaking at 3000 RPMs and flattens out. So as you can assume, this was the dyno sheet that inspired me and I had to learn everything about my buddy setup to try and duplicate it for my Evo. So here's the dyno sheet for my Evo 9 on a stock 2 liter 4G63 at 3,900 RPMs. We made 434 foot pounds of torque and then it levels out for pretty much the whole power band and then 504 right about here horsepower and then all just shy of 500 horsepower right at red line. So here are the five main factors to making your setup spool faster. So firstly is twin scroll, and that is when the exhaust manifold gases are separated into two different chambers, and they hit a smaller and bigger wheel in the turbo. As you can see right here, there's a step, so there's two different size fins on one wheel of the exhaust, meaning the smaller blade gets moved first by exhaust gases from one side, and then once the speed starts to pick up, the exhaust gases from the other side take over and take the bigger blade. Next, we have the dual port internal wastegate or external wastegate. Now, the reason I say internal wastegate is better for boost response is because the sheer size of of the relief port. On internal wastegate, this is the relief port, and on this one, it is 32 millimeters. External wastegates typically start at 38 millimeters, going up to 44. That four extra millimeters relieves a lot more air that could be spooling the turbo. I've been doing this for a few years, and I haven't seen one dyno sheet of an external wastegate spooling earlier than 4,000 RPMs and still making respectable power, but I have seen about five or six dyno sheets making four or 500 plus and spooling before 4,000 RPMs. And that was all on internal wastegates. Next on the list, the four port boost controller paired with the dual port internal wastegate. So essentially there's a diaphragm in the middle and you can send boost pressure to the bottom or you can send boost pressure to the top. So at lower RPMs, you, you can send boost pressure to the bottom port, slamming the wastegate shut. And that is done via one of the extra ports on the four port boost controller compared to a three port. As you start to make that dirt nasty boost early on, you can take less pressure out of there and put more pressure into the top, thus opening and letting the wastegate breathe. I will say all ECUs or plug-in tuning software may not be able to handle the four port boost controller. So check with your tuner first. You may need to go standalone before you can do this. I got lucky and I was able to do it on stock ECU via Tefra with my tuner. Next on the list is your wheel selection in your turbo. So a huge factor when it comes to, you know, spooling faster is also turbo size. If you go pick some kind of, pick up some 82 millimeter turbo, that's why you see these guys spooling at 5,500 RPMs or maybe even later sometimes. But these tips I'm gonna show you guys could actually even help bigger turbos spool sooner. My turbo, this is a 20G turbo with a billet compressor wheel. Next, if available, a titanium wheel on the hot side. This reduces the rotational mass greatly. Reducing that rotational mass or the overall weight of the wheel setup in the turbo is amazing, especially when it comes to something that spins at 10 to 15,000 RPMs. Here's some pictures from my turbo building showing me how much lighter the combo setup of the titanium and billet wheel are compared to a standard wheel. And lastly, let's talk about plumbing size, aka your exhaust manifold and your intercooler and intercooler piping. Imagine all the piping as a balloon that you have to fill up to build the pressure to get to your turbo. So if you have some crazy tubular manifold like this versus a more log style manifold like this, the longer distances the exhaust gases have to travel from the head to the turbo, the longer it's gonna take to spool. Also, if you go too big on your porting, the longer it's gonna take to spool. So my runners on this one are just shy of inch and a half. And if I were to go to a two or two and a half inch on the inside diameters of the runners, think about how much more area has to build pressure before it gets to the turbo. Same thing goes for your intercooler and intercooler piping. If you get a massive 
four, five, six inch intercooler, it's gonna take a lot more time to fill up that whole intercooler to build pressure in your turbo. Also, the length of your intercooler piping plays a factor as well. How far away it takes from the intercooler to charge the intake manifold and the turbo. So in closing, to spool faster, a twin scroll turbo, a four port boost controller, a dual port wastegate. Internal wastegate is a little bit better than external, but external can work as well with the dual port and your intercooler piping. And then a lighter combo of the turbo wheel itself, either billet and titanium or billet alone. Thanks everyone for stopping in. If you enjoyed the information, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell for future racing videos and content. Peace out.